As we start to look at, and like you said, legacy, right? You know, that's obviously also a very important part of the planning that we do. Um, it's that final piece of the overall puzzle. You know, it kind of aligns a lot with estate planning. We just call it legacy. Mm -hmm. um, and we believe that, you know, if we did that same scenario, that same cash flow analysis, and we realize, again, not to sound repetitive, but Mr. and Mrs. Jones are going to be okay, and their main goal is legacy, we think life insurance has a pretty good component to, to, to be part of that because, you know, you used the word earlier, leverage, right? Mm -hmm. There's a couple different hurdles that folks need to think about as they start to plan forward both for themselves, the next generation, and maybe even the generation after that. And one of them is the Massachusetts estate tax, right? Absolutely. And do you want your kids to pay that you know, we did an analysis for a couple on the Cape. We realized, you know, again, you got to go based on actuaries, life expectancies, things like that. Their estate tax bill was going to be anywhere from five hundred and fifty to six hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars when it was all said and done. Uh, estate tax, IRA tax, kids were going to have to cut a check. You know, when the estate was settled for, you know, let's call it round figure six hundred thousand dollars. So I asked, you know, we simply said, do you want them to sell assets and write the check for 600,000? Or do we want to look at strategies that, that you, you, you know, you can leverage some of your assets to take care of that $600,000 maybe at 150 or $200,000, you know what I mean? Sure. Well, it, it kind of completes, it completes the, the, the circuit or it completes the plan. Um, the the estate tax piece it's it's inevitable for for those folks it you you should be commended you should be congratulated on having gotten to that threshold where it's an actual concern and we're proud to help you get get there uh, but at the same time there's that tremendous liability that's that's due within you know the year of your passing you know uncle sam is is looking for their their piece of the pie correct and uh, you can anticipate that you can preempt it, um, and again with leveraged dollars, um, you can make it so that there's already an accounting for the taxes that are due. So that if the portfolio has the potential to continue to grow, or if your assets are just illiquid, or let's say you've got a lot in real estate and the markets aren't ideal to to sell those assets off to account for the taxes that are due. You can use insurance as a strategy. You can use it as a le as leverage to account for those taxes that are going to be due inevitably. Um, a yeah. really simple way of thinking about it is if you were buying, let's say you were buying someone a gift card for a really expensive store, and you see the prices of the items in the store, and the gift card could get you that item, but then there's also other expenses associated, like the taxes, what have you. Um, let's say Lululemon, for, for, sure. in, for instance. Um, your gift could be the $100, but the item itself, um, that might cover it, but it doesn't necessarily cover the taxes that are due as well. Correct. So if you wanted to give the whole gift, you would make the gift for the hundred dollars and the taxes that are due <laughs> that taxes that are due yes i don't know about your household but lululemon's a big expense <laughs> it's very <laughs> in mine it's expensive <laughs> so if i'm giving a gift and i want to give the entire gift i have to account for that additional layer that's going to be due 